Before I begin this review, I just wanted to let you all know that in the description below there is a link uh, for the Black Lives Matter movement. There's petitions in there that you can find and sign, uh, donation centers that you can donate to, and information about upcoming protests if you want to attend that. I'm always active on Twitter retweeting stuff uh, that I agree with as far as like all the current events going on, uh, but I think it would be a pretty big failure on my part to not mention it on my YouTube channel and just act like nothing is going on right now. So uh, just there's a link down below for anyone who wants to help out and didn't know beforehand. Everyone needs to keep the momentum kind of going and keep the messages coming in, keep telling their stories so that everyone can finally listen and maybe for a change we can actually bring about some real change. Uh, okay, so now that that part is out of the way for all the weirdos that didn't want me to mention that, sorry I mentioned it, let's talk about a movie that barely anyone knows about. Wretched is a new horror film that was distributed by IFC Films, and it's from the Pierce Brothers directing and writing this film. This movie is about a young teenager named Ben who is going to live with his dad for at least the first part of his summer. His family is going through a separation at the moment, so he's trying to get used to living with just his dad and working for him at this beach, helping people dock their boats and helping kids with sailing lessons. But soon he discovers after being there for a bit that there's something sinister going on next door, something he doesn't quite understand, and he soon begins to realize that a witch has taken her home into the next door neighborhood. House. I didn't see a single trailer for this movie. I didn't know what it was about at all. The first time I heard of it was just when Chris Stuckman reviewed it. And it, when I saw the thumbnail, like what the poster was and the trailer footage inside of it, I was like, this kind of looks pretty groovy. Like it's, it looks like a movie that I would like to see. Unfortunately, he wasn't so favorable towards the movie, but I still had a drive to actually want it. Like just because he gave it a C plus, I still wanted to actually seek this out and watch it for myself. It looked kind of groovy. And especially since, you know, movie theaters are still closed because you know, um, um, it, you know, it's just another movie that I can watch that is a new release at home. So I sought this movie out and definitely the best way I can describe this movie is that it it, it feels like a Goosebumps story. It's just a little bit more rated R. There's more like gore and graphic stuff. But it is like a lot of Goosebumps books about a teenager who is doing everyday teenage stuff, going through everyday problems. And then of course there's a slow buildup of discovery and, and exploration of something supernatural going on near him. And this movie definitely has the potential to have a really great story. The setup is perfectly there. And it helps also that the witch effects, the gore that goes along with her, the sound effect, the cracking of her, and just the overall look, it's perfect. The Pierce Brothers, I think, really went all out with directing this movie. There's a lot of really great filmmaking behind all of the spooky witch stuff in this movie, and it's, it's pretty effective for the most part. They did a really great job of having very visually intense horror sequence shots in this movie. So there is some good things working towards it. These Pierce brothers obviously care a lot about the craft of filmmaking and they had a good potential with the story. They are also the writers here. Unfortunately, I think maybe somebody else should have come in and revised their script because although the potential is definitely there for a good story, I think when I describe this as a Goosebumps plot, I really mean that they could have condensed it and made it a little bit more simpler in order for it to work as well. It feels like an elongated Goosebumps episode. Like sometimes a Goosebumps thing will be like two parts and it's like an hour long it's like, okay, that's kind of like the perfect length for this, and this is like an hour and 35 minutes, so it feels like there's a lot of extra stuff they had to put in, but it wasn't really all that necessary at the end of the day. For example, there's these cool kids that uh, get introduced a little early on, and they're, they're kind of bullies towards Ben uh, for a couple scenes later on, but they're really only there so there can be conflict. Like, it, it's, it becomes so clear that that's the only reason why they're there. There's a hot chick with them who he spies on because she lives kind of next door, but even that subplot kind of goes away after a while and there's no real character to any of these cool kids either. They're just, hey, we're coming up now and we're the bullies and she's hot and that's her only characteristic. So they leave the movie a lot and they come in when it's absolutely necessary for them to be there and when I say that I mean it's just important for a plot thing like, oh, Ben couldn't do this thing because now they're here. And then eventually they just kind of go away and we never have any mention of them ever again, you know? So it's just stuff like that that you could have ripped out and you could have made this movie a little bit more tight. But if you want to have all that stuff, there's definitely more ways you can explore that, but you'd have to invest a little bit more in the screenplay at that part. And that's where another issue of mine comes in, is that the main character, Ben, um, I don't think he's a bad actor at all. The actor playing him, I don't think he did a bad job. I'm not trying to dunk on this actor. He did good for what he had, but unfortunately, there's not a lot there to begin with. You get a lot of backstory from him. He broke his arm because he broke into someone's house to get some Vicodin. He has parents who are going through a divorce, and and that's obviously really tough, but they don't really get to the heart of the character, I thought. It's just a lot of, uh, you understand stuff that has happened before, 
and at one point he just mentions, you're not my mom, to uh, his dad's new girlfriend, but then they kind of quickly resolve it and they keep moving forward. You don't really get a sense of him having a personality either. You're not really particularly charmed by him or intrigued by him as a character. You're just kind of watching him going, meh. He's, he's someone who interacts with other characters and replies with standard dialogue. That's his personality. <laughs> just His personality is just guy who replies to you with dialogue. <laughs> Even the family drama feels really underdeveloped. Like, it's obviously there, but once you see where it kind of goes, you're kind of like, uh... Why, 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 why did we even need this, you know, if you're not going to emphasize it or, or have it have some kind of importance, you know what I mean? And obviously they're keeping certain things hidden for a reveal that actually, once again, it had potential and it wasn't all that bad. But while they tried to make it a little bit more secretive, they undercut a lot of the genuine emotion that you could have gotten from a lot of the characters. Uh, the relatability aspect of it is kind of gone. Because although you can hear the term divorce and think like, oh, I went through a divorce or my parents went through one or I, I know people went through a divorce, that doesn't mean you're getting to know this particular character or how it's affecting him directly we just get once again just him saying to his dad's girlfriend you're not my mom and that's the only that's the only bit we kind of get out of him when it comes to that there's no other way it's affecting him like how does he feel about not spending summer in his home for a bit you know like they, they don't really explore that a whole lot there's only one character in this movie who I thought actually had personality to him and they actually were able to uh, steal the movie at that point was um, Mallory played by Piper Curta who similar to my last review for the Vast of Night it has a Disney Channel actress uh, Sierra McCormick in the Vast of Night who uh, was in Ant Farm a couple episodes of Jesse and now they're in this movie and they're really great Similar to Piper Curta, she had a couple roles on Ant Farm, and she had a role in Team Beach 2, and then she had a starring role and I didn't do it, and now she's doing this, and she's honestly really good. There, there's a character there, there's personality, you can connect with her, you like seeing her pop up, you like seeing her interact with everyone, you want to see more of her. She did a really great job in this, she's easily like my favorite part of this movie acting wise, and you kind of think after a while, like, I wish that she was kind of the main character, you, like have this personality, maybe going through the same kind of personal problems that Ben is going through, or just give Ben a personality, you know, just either one of those two will work. It just made Ben an overall boring character and for someone who is the lead character and for a script that is promising so much story potential, that's what becomes disappointing about it. There's other parts of the screenplay that I thought were like really kind of poorly thought out. There's a online search at one point to find like, hmm, what's this symbol? And of course it brings up everything you kind of need to know and it's like really like that That kind of stu stuck out to me as far as like, uh, I, I wish maybe they didn't. I just wish he didn't know anything about this thing, you know, may maybe make it more of a discovery like every time the witch does something or he's learning stuff, you know, just more of a mystery, but instead they're like, oh, Google search, here's everything you need to know. It's like, okay. Without spoiling anything, there's a moment later on in the movie where he has to get away from a bad situation, and the way it happens, you're instantly kind of thinking, like, really, like, because they set it up, so you're thinking back to the setup they did, and it's like, okay, I guess that makes sense, but it it's dumb, you know? <laughs> like, it's really stupid, like, it's it's just dumb. Why is this in the movie? Like, why is this how he gets away from this? There's also a bit later where throughout the movie, Ben has been spying on these next door neighbors because he is suspicious of a witch. And it's like Disturbia or Rear Window when, you know, they're looking through the binoculars, looking out. Basically, they make it aware that, hey, we're watching you. Here's something that you slipped to us. We're giving back to you. Um, and then what follows in the next, like, minute, literally the next minute, he decides, you know what? Now's the time to go over there and bust into their cellar, you know? And I was like, why would you, why would you get a note back that your friend Piper Curta sent them? And now they're sending it back to you like, hey, we know you're watching us, cut that shit out. And he's like, okay, um, as soon as you get out of the cellar in the next minute, I'm gonna go down. Obviously nothing bad happened at that moment, but it's a little dumb. And once again, because you don't know this character or a lot of his drives or personality, it feels weird that all of a sudden he's making just this really bold and dangerous move. They mentioned once because he has a cat, it's like, oh, I broke into someone's house to stole Vicodin. So once again, it's something where they give it a setup, but once seeing where it kind of plays out, it's like, well, I feel like you probably did this in the dead of night trying to be uber quiet, or maybe you did it when the, those people in this house were gone, but these people are out and about broad daylight and you're going over to their cellar. Like, like once again, it's kind of dumb. There's a few like technical issues that I think I had with the movie, like minor like editing stuff that they do, not enough to bring down the movie entirely. There's other things that bring down the movie, but this is just kind of like a whatever, but it's noticeable. Like there's a moment where the mom next door who's about to get munched on by a witch, like she's by the crib and then all of a sudden something's oozing below and it's just like a still shot of like her feet and ooze coming up and it holds there for a couple seconds. Then all of a sudden, which comes up and grabs her ankles and there's a sound effect and then it kind of mini digital zoom and it's like, oh, why'd you do that? And also what follows is her screaming while she's dragged under and loud munching noises, which is like eating her or something. Um, but there's a baby monitor that is 
that, that has sound, the sound is up, and their son had just come in prior to this scene, like saying, hey, I can't sleep, can I sleep in your bed? But now there's this loud ass noise coming from the baby monitor, and these two, the dad and the son, aren't waking up. You know, like, okay, like the son was literally just awake like five minutes ago, but okay, whatever. Also, the ending of the movie is something that I like in concept, but it made me think back like, wait, like, okay, you, you wanna do this kind of ending, and I get it, but how did this happen? You know, because everything seemed kind of set up like, everything seemed set up so that this wouldn't happen, but it happened anyways. But you just kind of want us to just go with it. And I'm not really, I'm not really one to just go with it. I, I, I want to know how this happened. It seems like this thing did something completely out of nowhere just for a surprise ending. And it didn't really work for me at the end of the day. Also concerning the third act, it's not a bad third act, you know, it's, it's whatever. There's some thrills, there's cool witch effects, so that's cool, but and it's a cool setting, but I, I was instantly reminded of the third act in a movie called The Hole in the Ground that came out last year. And that was honestly a much, it's it's not their, ma it's not a masterpiece as far as A24 movies go, but it's a really effective horror film. And in that third act, it goes into a, a similar kind of scene, a cramped, dark aesthetic. And it's genuinely kind of horrific and kind of like, ugh, and unsettling. And this one, it was just kind of, all right, we're going through the thrills like, oh, okay, there's a witch. And it's it's kind of fun. But I kind of wished it was a little bit more horrific, you know, because there's a lot of good filmmaking to back this movie up and not make it horrible. But, you know, everything else is kind of bogging it down. You wish you would excel in a, in a more extra way at one point. And it just kind of doesn't. It kind of remains exactly where where it's at and doesn't really try to be anything beyond that. I didn't really hate this movie watching it. It's perfectly watchable, I think. And I, I don't... I don't not recommend this movie. I think you can watch it and maybe have a good time with it or maybe say, eh, it wasn't that bad, but you know, eh. So it's a perfectly watchable movie, but one that once the movie finished, I was just kind of racking up all the issues that came up during it. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to give this a pretty low grade, you know, like, cause there's a lot here that they could have done that they just kind of, it felt like they avoided doing just for the sake of doing the most simple thing, which would have worked if there wasn't so much other things that they could have done that just feel kind of like, kind of like a distraction beforehand. I'm gonna give The Wretched a C-. minus. It definitely has some good effects, some good filmmaking to back it up. Uh, it has a good premise for a story, and Piper Curta is the standout as far as the actors go, but unfortunately a lot of the family drama felt underdeveloped, our main character feels underdeveloped, a lot of the other characters don't make an impression, and a lot of the writing in this movie just feels kind of lazy and kind of half-assed just so they can keep it moving, and I just kind of wish they went more in-depth with a lot of the stuff that they had put out because it's not bad at all. Like I said, I kind of admired this movie. I could see myself watching it again, even though I don't particularly like it. I could see myself watching it again because it's not like frustrating or annoying to like an umph degree. It is really more so just kind of disappointing that they could have done a lot more with it and instead we just kind of have like an eh kind of movie. But, you know, one that's watchable, so there's that. But if you've seen The Wretched, leave in the comments below what you thought of it. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.